Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today I'm going to show you how I sculpted this crazy candle character. I've sped the footage up 10 times so you can still easily see what I'm doing and I'll be talking about all the techniques and the brushes that I'm using. Once again, remember to check out my website and the playlists in the description and the playlists on the channel for more free courses and detailed guides about what I'm talking about. All these techniques I go into a bit more detail with, with my character course, and it's got a beginner's perspective, so it will take you through step by step if you're confused by anything. So I start off with the default cube, and I actually turn it into a cylinder just by doing two loop cuts around it. It gives it slightly better topology. It's not a big deal, but it helps out slightly. I'm using Dyn Topo later on, so any sort of initial mesh editing will be kind of deleted. You can see I make these tiny arms and legs, very simple, just the cylinder, and extrude it out and push them into position. I use the mirror modifier to start off with and then just apply that and pose the character, put them into position. And then when I'm happy, that's when I start sculpting. A lot of the time I prefer to do a sort of mirror image so I can sculpt on both sides. But in this case, the pose was quite important, so I couldn't really do that. So you can see I've gone into sculpt mode and just sculpted out a very basic shape of the candle just so I can get an idea of the shape of the face and where it's going to go before starting the full pose. To do this I'm using the snake hook tool or the snake hook brush. I always think that's the best brush for finding the initial shapes. I'm using Dyn Topo as well when I start sculpting and I have it on a resolution of about 10 but it does depend on the size of your shape and cube that you start with. So again, back to the multiply brush. Once I've moved the arms and legs into position, I can now see how I want the candle to look. And then I start reposing them again, making sure they're in the perfect position. Although I wasn't actually that happy with the final pose. And that's maybe something I need to work on. I've been working a lot on my 2D sketching and I had a sketch of the character to the side of me, how I wanted it. And I had several thumbnails and several ideas, along with other reference images as well which is obviously really helpful to have that sort of guide. So you can see I'm still on the snake hook tool here, but I actually haven't turned Dyn Topo on. So I often make that sort of mistake. It ends up being just the same as the grab brush pretty much when you haven't got Dyn Topo turned on. Not that it makes much difference at this stage, just pulling around and pushing things into position. I did initially make these sort of two sort of balls of wax that he was standing on, but I changed my mind in the end and changed that all to a sort of candlestick. I think with posing the model it's sometimes a really common thing for me to just keep it very safe when I want to really push it a bit further and I think that's some advice I'd give to people who are sort of intermediate level, try and push your poses that bit further, make them more dynamic and make them more exciting. If it's not posed well it can look a little bit static and boring. So again still getting the basic shape of the pose with the feet and the hands in this point and then I put a match stick in in a moment. And you can see there's hardly any detail going in, just getting that pose, making sure it's right, and making sure I'm happy with the shape. As I always say with these things, don't start adding the detail too early. And I do kind of live by that with the way I work. It's really tempting to go in and start adding the detail to see what it's gonna look like, but that can be destroyed later on when you start having to repose it because it's not in quite the right position. The matchstick, I didn't do any sculpting, it's just a subdivision surface with a cube, so it's nice and simple. So now that I'm happy with the pose, I go into sculpt mode once again with Dyn Topo turned on, and I'm using the draw brush to sculpt out the face. Nice simple features, nothing complicated I wouldn't say. The complicated part I suppose is getting the expression, which is quite tough. The candle itself and all the wax is quite straightforward because of the blobbiness of it. It's a very organic shape. And you can actually just use the sort of blob brush and the inflate brush to create the sort of wax drips. And you can see them all coming down here, quite simple. Again, just with the draw brush and sort of inflating the end out so it's sort of a pocket of wax that's collected at the end. Tough to get the face to line up and be symmetrical. So uh, there was a fair bit of work on that. And then sorting out the expression. The fun thing is when you're not working with symmetry, you can work a bit more on the expressions and make them quite interesting and exciting. But when you've got symmetry on, you always have to do that the last bit and you might have too much detail to really change the expressions in a fun way. I like to get the eyes in at this point. So once I've got the rough features of the shape, get the eyes in and then you can work around them. Obviously I wanted the candle to have this sort of crazy expression like he's some sort of rogue candle that's managed to steal the match. 
but he's slightly worried about the fact that he's already a light, so he's melting, but he wants to create as much havoc as he can before he melts completely. Like I'm saying, I'm trying to do a lot of 2D work at the moment as well, and I think that's influencing my 3D work, and I wanted to see or go back to uh, my 3D sculpting and practice a bit, and I think it really does help to do uh, some 2D work if you're a sculptor uh, to sort of get the idea of shape and form. I would say 2D is a lot quicker than sculpting. I suppose that does depend on your skill level and things. And it really is great for getting those thumbnail sketches in and gathering ideas. But it's really helped me also with the form and shapes of the face, doing a lot of sort of face sketches and things like that to try and improve both my sculpting and my artwork in general. Occasionally I go across to the crease brush, so once I've got a fair bit of my model down, the crease brush is where I kind of add the detail and smooth things out. I've upped the resolution of the dye topper at this point. I think I'm probably on about 30. Again, that does depend on your size of your object. It's not really that many faces at the moment. I do add a lot more detail a bit later on, but at this stage you don't really need that many faces and it can actually just cause more problems than it can solve. So the crease brush is to add those sort of sharp lines around the eyebrows and you can use what's called what I, what I call the reverse crease brush. So you hold down control and you can make some nice sharp lines. It is a bit like sketching then and it's quite a nice way, an artistic way of doing things. I spend a lot of time on the hands. Hands are quite tough really. They're, they're tough to draw and they're tough to sculpt and it's easy to make them look bad. Um, nice simple hands though. It's kind of a glove really, isn't it? Uh, but just sort of a very basic hand. Then I move on to each of the limbs, still keeping them separate. I think that really helps to just keep them separate for the moment. You can join them all together at the end. It's very simple, much simpler now we've got the remesh. I'm just doing a really basic arm, uh, very simple anatomy, but uh, knowing some simple anatomy can help you uh, get a good shape. So you can sort of see where the kneecap is, calf muscle and so forth. It does really help. If you're gonna be a sculptor, you need to have some anatomy understanding. It doesn't have to be really detailed, you don't have to know all the names, I certainly don't, but you do need to roughly know where the muscles are and what muscles are doing what. For this last hand, I think I didn't do it particularly well. I should have thought more about what position this hand was going to be in. I just did a very basic glove and it sort of pointed out like this, but uh, it seems a bit dull and that seems the sort of lifeless part of the sculpt in its entirety. And getting that thumb right was a real pain. You can see me fiddling about for ages with this silly thumb. Uh, but it, it's getting there. But uh, it does help, again, doing the 2D work. I can sort of uh, move a bit quicker through these things. But it still does take me a bit of time uh, with the more complex parts of the body. So you can start to see it sort of come together at this point, uh, just doing the feet. Again, uh, simple shapes, nothing detailed, nothing difficult. But it does help, again, to have some experience it, with anatomy so you know which bits are where. And that's where the 2D stuff can help because you can quickly produce these things and understand anatomy that much quicker than if you had to do a sculpt to practice each time, it would take you much long, longer to learn. So at this point going into the eyes, just doing a simple extrusion, just so you can sort of see some sort of eyeball and then adding these little dots. I saw someone do that once and I thought, ah, oh, that does work quite well. They're sort of like the highlights that you see in people's eyes. So we're sculpting in highlights rather than adding them with a paintbrush. It certainly helps because of the sort of waxy nature. Nothing's going to have a different texture or color. So it's all gonna be one waxy ball or one waxy material. So sculpting in the details is going to be the best way. You can see how I'm sort of just building up the wax with the draw tool once again and sort of blobbing it in areas. Very simple thing to do. It's quite a nice organic substance really. So uh, it works well for sculpting and people do sculpt candles and things. So uh, you can understand it's quite a nice medium really. Again, just going around with the crease brush, just smartening things up, repositioning the feet a little bit, getting that pose how I want it. Then I work on this uh, wick and I start off with the cube and think that's a hopeless idea, let's do a curve instead. Um, and it takes me a little while to get the curve right. I want this sort of really jaggedy, weird wick sticking out as if it's giving it more character, almost like a hairstyle then, isn't it? And then just solidify the curve. Later on, I lower the resolution and then just apply it as a mesh. 
Then I start doing some flames, nice simple, just to sculpt and wiggle it around a bit with the snake hook tool, so it's fairly straightforward. So at this point, I believe, I start joining everything together. So it's very simple, you just select everything you want to join, press Control J, and then you can remesh. Your remesh often has to be quite detailed if you want to keep any detail that you've got in your mesh, so you need a fairly decent computer for that. It does all depend how far you've gone with your sculpt. If you've got a weaker computer, then you'll need to do this stage of the remesh a little bit earlier before you add the fine details. And you can see now I'm going in with my crease brush and just adding in those fine details, smoothing things out. Not that it needs that much smoothing, but uh, going around, smoothing things out, adding in some sort of sharper lines to give it that sort of cartoony feel. And again, that's using the crease brush, but in reverse, so holding control down and adding those sort of sharp lines around the edge. You can really get a sort of sketchy feel to your brush with that reverse crease brush. It's really helpful. So you can see it just adds that fine detail and I can go in and really smarten things up. So there it is all in its entirety. I changed the wax at the bottom and changed it to a candlestick. So he's sort of standing and he's come to life from this candlestick. I think it was a better composition really. The node setup is fairly straightforward. It's obviously using a lot of subsurface scattering to give it that waxy look. And there's a strong emphasis on using bloom with emissions and the lighting. I talk a lot about lighting in my other videos and I don't think there's a lot different going on here. Still the same sort of three point lighting setup. So hopefully that will make sense. If you've got any questions then do comment below. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.